the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God. It's time for another Word of Faith Netcast. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week. We're going to be getting into a message that was recorded directly live, at least as live as it can be. It was recorded this morning at uh, Faith and Victory Church, and I tell you what, I'm excited about this message. It is talking about the name of Jesus. We have right and access to use the name of Jesus. So let's get directly into that message as it was recorded. Right, let's go ahead and open our Bibles. Um, we'll go to John chapter 20. The title of this message is The Name of Jesus Belongs to Believers. The Name of Jesus Belongs to Believers. John 20, you can go ahead and find that. Let me tell you what got me started on this particular study. Um, I was listening to the radio and as I was driving into work and the uh, announcer, DJ, I don't know what you want to call him, uh, morning guy, was talking about how a Christian organization called Campus Crusade for Christ, which I'm somewhat familiar with. When I was in college, Campus Crusade was very active on campus. I wasn't directly a member of Campus Crusade, um, but I was involved in a group called Full Gospel Student Fellowship, which was the full gospel group, hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, Campus Crusade was one of the many organizations, Christian organizations on campus. Well, they announced recently that they are changing their name they're taking out the word Christ. And their rationale is, is they did a study and they found out that the name Christ is offensive to 9% of Christians. And it's offensive to 26% of non-Christians. And since it's offending people, of course, we need to just get rid of it altogether. And so they're changing their name from Campus Crusade to, for Christ to Crew. C-R-U, crew, which I assume is cool, you know, at the college kid age. Hey, I go to crew, man, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I, uh, I get a little uh, emotional about such things, and so I have an outlet for that. And the outlet I have for that is a blog that I do called hyperfaith.org. If you want to go out and read that, that's where I get to vent. <laughs> you know, uh, I've got a website, WFM.org, which is the ministry website. I try, I try to be real calm and collected there. But at Hyperfaith, all bets are off, you know, I just go for it. So I started out my little article about this by saying, what do you call a Christian organization that takes Christ out of its name? No longer Christian. Amen? <laughs> Sorry. Just telling it like it is. Because if you're ashamed of the name of Christ, then something is seriously wrong with your organization. Amen. And, uh, you know, hey, I don't pull any punches over it. Now, I realize, before we go any further, I realize that Christ is not his name. His name is Jesus. Christ is who he is. Christ means the anointed one. Yeah. Okay, so he is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. And that's literally what Christ means. Well, the other thing they were concerned about is the word crusade because they thought it would offend Muslims because of the crusades uh, where the Christians, you know, essentially fought against the Muslims trying to take over the world. Well, guess what? <laughs> They're still trying to take over the world. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, we won't get into that. But at the same time, uh, they're just so politically correct there at Campus Crusade. Now, Bill Bright found Campus Crusade, and I thought to myself when I first heard this, you know, boy, he must be rolling in his grave now uh, that they're changing the name of the organization. But I did a little research and reading and found out that he told his wife before he died, we'll probably have to eventually change the name because it'll, it'll offend people. And I thought, wow. You know, talk about, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, dulling the tarnish on the armor of your heroes there. Uh, you know, here's the thing about it, folks. 
Christians are going to have to get over this wishy-washy, ooey-gooey, we can't offend anybody attitude. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to just believe the Word of God, preach the Word of God, and stand up and say, I am a Christian, I am a believer, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Tough. You know what I'm saying? Because, the, you know, you take all the other religions of the world, they're all saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that, and, you know, teaching it in the schools, doing whatever they want to do. It's if you're a Christian that you can't say those things. Well, not in this camp. <laughs> all right? We're going to tell it like it is, praise God. And we're going to find out about the importance of the name of Jesus. Let's do a little, little background research before we get right into the Scripture here. Uh, the word Jesus in, is the Latin form of the Greek esios. All right, which in turn is the transliteration of the Hebrew Yeshua, or sometimes translated Joshua, or again Yehoshua. Okay, so there's different ways of pronouncing that. A transliteration, by the way, if you're not familiar with that term, is where you take the, um, the word from the original language, how it's pronounced, and then you kind of translate, but not just translate, but you take the sounds that you're saying from that word and you write it out in English text. I mean, obviously Greek is, you know, Greek. <laughs> it's, it's Greek text. It's not English text. So a transliteration is where you take esios, the way it's pronounced, and then spell it out as best you can in English, which would be I-E-S-O-U-S. -S. Okay, that's a transliteration. That's what that means. It literally means Jehovah is salvation. The Greek name is connected with the verb ishtai, which means to heal. Praise God. So Jesus' name not only means Jehovah is salvation, but see, we know the word salvation yeah. is the Greek word sozo. Yeah. S-O-Z-O, again, the transliteration. But it's actually got a kind of a D sound in there. S-O-D-Z-O is really kind of closer, sozo. But the, the word sozo means saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, delivered from all temporal evil. All right, that's a, that's a mouthful. Yeah. But what it means is it covers every area of life. Getting saved isn't just getting your ticket punched and going to heaven. Now, praise God we're getting our ticket punched and going to heaven. Don't get me wrong. That's great. And I grew up Southern Baptist, and that's what we knew, and we knew it. Oh, boy. Yeah. We knew that we were saved. Saved to the uttermost. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, we didn't know how much the uttermost was. Because we were saved, healed, delivered, made whole. Spirit, soul, body, financially and socially delivered from all temporal evil. Well, man, that covers everything. Amen? So, we are saved. Again, part of the definition means to heal. It goes on to say, It's therefore not surprising that some of the Greek fathers allied the word Jesus with the same root. His name is impo was imposed on our Lord by God's express order, Luke 1, 31, Matthew 1, 21, we're not, won't turn there, to foreshadow that the child was destined to save his people from their sins. The term in the early church, code, and you know the early church, they were persecuted as well as Today's church, amen. Uh, persecution is a little different. Back then they were throwing them to the lines and killing them, you know. Hadn't quite got there yet here in America, but you know, <laughs> no. Uh, it was rough back then, and they had to hide. They had to kind of have secret meetings. And so what they did is they had a code sign, and that code sign was the sign of a fish. They'd just take a, a stick in the dirt, make a mark, and then make another mark, and that was the sign of the fish. And people now use it on the back of their cars. <laughs> you know, see dry people driving around with a little fish symbol on their car. Well, that's because the Greek word for fish is ichthus. And that, again, that's a transliteration, and, you know, it's, it's Greek letters. But I-C-T-H-U-S, ichthus, and it was called the sign of the fish. Each letter stood for a word. And the words that it stood for were Esios, Christos, Theo, Vita, Soter. Okay, Ichthus. And that means Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. Amen? So when you wrote the little sign of the fish, you were saying Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. And you were uh, a fisher of men. So there were a lot of tie-ins there. All right, so Esios Christos is the Greek Jesus Christ. 
All right. Now, let's look at John 20, 31. These things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one and God's anointed, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now, we're going to be concentrating on the name of Jesus specifically in this teaching. We have life through his name. I'd say that's important. I'd say the name of Jesus is important. If we have life through his name. Amen. Amen. Acts 4, let's look at that. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other name. Now, that means there's no salvation in the name of Buddha. There's no salvation in the name of Muhammad or Confucius or whoever else you want to look after. <laughs> no, there's only salvation in one name. That's the name of Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men. Well, that makes it pretty clear, doesn't it? Any name, heaven or earth, <laughs> praise the Lord, uh, whereby ye must be saved. So there's only one way to be saved, that's through the name. So again, I think the name's important. I think we need to concentrate a bit here on the name. Let's uh, go over to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now see, Philip came here and he's preaching. And he preaches a big message. But it says, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So the name of Jesus is part of what he preached. See, I think we, we tend to forget the importance here of the name of Jesus. And I'm talking about the name Jesus itself contains power. We know, as Word of Faith believers, we know that words contain power. Amen? We, we've studied this out. We know this, that words contain power. Matter of fact, we know from the Word of God in Isaiah 50, uh, 55, it talks about God sent His Word, and His Word contains within it the power to cause that word to come to pass. He goes on to say that the word will not return to him void. Well, how does his word return to him? It returns when we speak it out of our mouth. He spoke it originally. We got a hold of the word. Now we speak it back. So it will not return to him void, that is void of power, but it contains within it the power to cause whatever it says to come to pass. Now, knowing that, we know words contain power. Well, this word, Jesus, is more than just a word that means healing. It's more than just a word that means salvation for his people. It, it's more than just a name, Joe, Fred, whatever. This is a name that has been assigned special abilities, powers, bequeathed by God. God invested in the name of Jesus. And we'll see that as we go through the scripture here. Um, let's look at 1 John 3, 23. This is his commandment. Now, you notice that this isn't a suggestion. You know, it'd be one thing if God said, you know, uh, just a suggestion here. No, this is a commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave his commandment. We're commanded to believe in the name. So again, this is an optional. This is, this is what I keep coming back to. Well, we're just going to change the name of our organization. We don't, we don't like it anymore. People are offended by it. Look, the name of Jesus is worth standing up for. The name of Jesus is worth adhering to. Amen? All right, now, here's another thing about the name. Not only did God invest power in the name, he gave the name to us. That's right. Amen? We have the name. Now, how do we demonstrate that? Let's, let's look at Acts chapter 3. You remember the story Peter was, was walking through there. He saw the, the man lame, and he turns to him, and he, he's, the man's begging alms. And Peter didn't have any money in his pocket. Now, a lot of people try to make that you know, out to be, well, he was just poor. Well, he didn't have any money in his pocket, you know. I don't have any money right now in my pocket, but I'm not poor. Amen. Amen. I got money in the bank. Praise the Lord. You know, just got paid Thursday. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Uh, but at the same time, just because I don't have any on me at the moment doesn't mean I don't have any period. Amen? So here's Peter. He's walking along. He says, silver and gold have I none, 
but such as I have give I thee. What did he have? In the name. So what did he have? He had the name. He had power in the name. He had authority in the name. He could use the name of Jesus because Jesus has given us as Christians power of attorney to use his name. Now, some of you know my mom, you know, she's 88, going to be 89 in next February. Uh, and she, bless her heart, doesn't believe in divine healing the way we do. She's raised Southern Baptist and she pretty much stayed there, you know, praise the Lord. And so uh, she's having issues that she's having to deal with and, and part of that is, is kind of some dementia and so forth. And matter of fact, we have some interesting adventures at our house because she's talking about how the boys are in the stove, we need to get them out, all kinds of crazy stuff, and we're like, okay. And they tell you not to argue with them, you know, not to say, no, no, there's nobody in there. Just, just say, we'll check. Go away for a moment, come back, okay, everything's fine. And then they kind of relax and everything's okay. Well, before she got to that stage, she gave me power of attorney. Now, through the power of attorney that was granted to me legally, I can write checks and sign them in her name. I can cash money out of her account in her name. I can make her payments in her name. You know, and to be honest, if you gave her the checkbook, she'd be writing checks to who knows what all. You know, and money just being blown. So it's a good thing <laughs> that we have taken the power of attorney to do that. But it's given me a great insight into what Jesus did for us. He gave us power of attorney to use his name. We have the authority to do just as Peter did here. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and walk. And the man leaped and went into the temple and was praising God. So the name worked. Amen. The authority to use that name worked. Now notice that Peter didn't pray in the name. Now you can pray in the name. Don't get me wrong, okay? You can definitely, matter of fact, Jesus said, when you pray, pray in my name, specifically. But in this particular case, he didn't pray. He didn't stop and say, oh Lord, you see this man here before us. He, he didn't do that, did he? He just said, in the name, rise up and walk. He used his authority in the name to speak and command. Now, he demanded or commanded something. Did he demand and command God? No. Did he demand and command Jesus? No. He commanded the man to rise up and walk. The only way the man could rise up and walk was for the healing power of God to heal him. And so that's what happened, praise God. But he spoke in the authority and the power of the name of Jesus and got things done. Now I bring this out, and Brother Hagin brings this out in his teaching concerning the name of Jesus, that you can pray in the name of Jesus and you can speak with authority in the name of Jesus. And he made the statement, I was watching his video last night on the name of Jesus. And as I was watching that video, Brother Hagin made the statement that a lot of Christians are not as aware as they should be of the power and of the authority that they have through the name of Jesus. They pray in Jesus' name, and that's good, nothing wrong with that, but they don't speak with authority in the name of Jesus as much and as often as they should. We don't exercise the authority that we really have. Now, speaking of Brother Hagin, let me just read to you a little, uh, I guess you call it a devotional that he put out at one time call the name of Jesus belongs to you. I can't say it any better than he said it, so I'm just going to read it to you here. Uh, he quotes Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Well, things in the Greek here is literally better translated beings. Okay? So not just things, but beings. And if you look at it that way, of beings in heaven, that would be the angels, of beings in the earth, and of beings under the earth. So that would cover uh, angels, demonic forces, you know, whatever. That would cover beings. So we have, in the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. 
Every knee is under, uh, or every being is under the authority of that name. All right, he says, the name of Jesus belongs to us as believers. We have a right to use the name of Jesus. The right to use Jesus' name is a blessing given to the church to every child of God. We have a fourfold right to use the name. First, we're born into the family of God and the name belongs to the family. You know, we talk about family names. You know, I'm, I'm of the Bailey family. Well, Bailey has got a, a long history. Uh, matter of fact, it's kind of an interesting history. <laughs> Bless our hearts. Uh, <laughs> Bailey is an Irish name, and uh, so we got a lot of Irish in us. But uh, I, I, my uncle actually did a little study of the, of the background of the Bailey family, and he found out that we have a king of England that is in the Bailey family. Wow. Only thing was, he was only king for one day. <laughs> he apparently killed the previous king, took over, and was so bad that the people rose up and killed him. Oh well. <laughs> but I guess I'm still royalty at least for a day. <laughs> oh well. You know, a colorful background in our family. Uh, my dad used to say there were two clans of Baileys. There were the horse stealers and the moonshiners. Well, what are you going to say to that? But he did like to point out that we were of the moonshining variety and that there was a point that moonshine was legal. Okay, so he said horse stealing's never been legal, but moonshining was. Okay. You know, and it's kind of hard to be Irish without having a little alcohol in there somewhere, but that's, that's another deal. I myself am a teetotaler, so hallelujah. All right, we have a fourfold right to use the name. Get back to Brother Hagin here. First, we're born into the family of God, and the name belongs to the family. So again, the family name of Bailey belongs to the Bailey family, whether we like it or not, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it does. So it, it identifies that family. Anybody that's a Bailey is part of that family. Well, in the same way, the name of Jesus defines our family. Matter of fact, the the reference to Jesus of his title, Christ, we are called Christians. And that term means little Christ, or ones who are like Christ. So to call ourselves Christians is to call ourselves ones like Jesus. And we should be operating in his authority, in his power, and in his name. All right, that's first. Second, we're baptized into the name. And being baptized in the name, we're baptized into Christ himself. Okay? Third, the name was conferred upon us by Jesus. This is the power of attorney. He says here, he gave us power of attorney. All right? And fourth, we're commissioned as ambassadors to go and herald the name. You know what a herald, a herald goes before and shouts, you know, the advent of a king is coming or some great person is coming. He's a herald before. Um, you know, my, my reference to herald is, uh, is the Silver Surfer, of course. Uh, I'm a comic book fan, and the Silver Surfer was the herald of Galactus. So if you're not a comic book fan, that'll just go zing right over your head. But that's how I got familiar with the term herald. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, it's always fun when you have Dr. Bill. Hallelujah. All right, and fourth, we're commissioned as ambassadors to go and to herald the name, go before, herald the name of Jesus among the nations. We're representatives of Christ. See, he went back to heaven. Now, he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. We're the ones that he left to use his name and to exercise his authority. If we don't use his name and we don't exercise his authority, his ministry is not going to function properly as it should. Which is why, again, I get a little upset when I hear people saying, oh, we, we don't want to say the name of Jesus now. We don't want to confess, or we don't want to pray in Jesus' name. We'll just say in God's name, or pray to God, and just take Jesus out of it. Why do you think they want to take Jesus out of it? Why are they so offended by the name? Because that's where the power is. I mean, think about it. When people cuss, they say Jesus. They don't say Buddha, they don't say Muhammad, they don't say any other name. Kind of 
kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, you'd think if, if everybody is, if, if we're in such a, you know, inclusive society and we're supposed to be sharing and sharing alike and all these kinds of things, there'd be people going around cussing Buddha. But you don't ever hear that. Why? Because Satan wants to denigrate the name of Jesus. He wants to tear down the authority, if he could, of the name of Jesus. And in order to do that, he wants to water it down. He wants to be use it so much in cursing that people don't take the name seriously. But on the other hand, they start attacking in his name. They oppose his name. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. But I want to finish up what Brother Hagin said here. Brother Hagin says, now I can't find in the Bible where it says we need to have any special faith to use the name of Jesus because the name already belongs to us. You don't need any special faith to get in your car and use it or drive it. It's your car. Amen? Now what he's talking about here is, you know, when, um, uh, when Peter was going through then, uh, was it Peter or was it Paul? Paul. Paul was going through and special miracles were wrought by Paul when handkerchiefs and claws were taken off of him and laid on people then they were healed and the demons left them. Okay? But it says special miracles. That was a special anointing that he had. Well, using the name of Jesus isn't special in the sense that you require some special anointing to do it. That's what Brother Hagin is saying here. Uh, everything I can find in the Bible says we don't need to have any special faith to use the name of Jesus because the name already belongs to us. You don't need special faith to get in your car and use it or drive it. You wouldn't think about saying, Brother Hagin, I want you to pray for me that I'll have enough faith to put the key in the ignition of my car and drive it home. No, you already know that you have the key in your pocket. You know what to do with it. So you act in faith unconsciously. In other words, you just do it. Okay? You see, it takes knowing what is yours. When you come to know that the name of Jesus is yours and you have a right to use the name, you'll begin to use it as unconsciously as you use the key to start your car and drive it. And then he says, here's a confession. To confess, I am a child of God and the name of Jesus belongs to me. I use the name of Jesus and the authority he has given me in that name. Amen. Now, Let's talk a bit here about opposition to the name. You know, we're talking about what started this whole study off for me was hearing that a Christian group was going to drop Christ from their name. Well, that opposition to the name has existed for a long time. In Acts chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And they called them, talking about, you know, the apostles and the ministers there, called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name well, of Jesus. God, we're out of time for this week. We're going to have to pick up next time. Remember to join us next time as we continue with this message on the name of Jesus. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you here. You can write us at Word of Faith Ministries. And that's Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213 5213 High Point, North Carolina. The zip code 27262. Of course, you can always write me at my email address. My email address is Dr. Bill Dr. B-I-L-L -L at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Join us for the next broadcast. Let other folks know about this video netcast that's available right on our website, W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. And remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.